Welcome to the Soulish Podcast. My name is Whitney Apke and I'm your host. On the Soulish Podcast, we talk about the soul journey, the body, soul, spirit connection. And I share my journey as well as bring on guests who share theirs. And it's just a really amazing platform to be able to explore ideas, explore beliefs, explore modalities that help us connect. And so I love that I have Reiki, astrology, I have psychic, I have chiropractors, I have every type of guest, past life regressionists, um, relationship coaches, motivational speakers, people that just really honestly have a huge heart for people for humanity, for helping humanity heal and uh, shift and transition into more connection with ourselves, God, source, universe, spirit, and each other. And that's really what it's all about at the end of the day. So it's really cool to have a platform which literally was birthed out of me having a shift in my journey and begin unboxing and deconditioning, deprogramming and exploring new things. And I wanted to share that with people in order for other people to be inspired and encouraged and maybe go on their own journey or be exposed to something that sets them off on another course of ideas, beliefs, you know, modalities, whatever it is. I just was like, I just wanna encourage people. And so here we are almost three years later, I love the guest that I have on for today. His name is Troy Hadid. He has an amazing heart. And this this topic is all about redefining our relationship to God. And I think that this conversation, although I hope you're not deterred by God, by the word God, because even if you're agnostic, atheist, it doesn't matter. This episode is really kind of redefining how we connect with the divine and how we reconnect with ourselves, how we realize and step into or acknowledge or, you know, be empowered in the fact that we are divine. We are divinity. We are an expression of the divine. And so if we have that big overarching, you know, vision and concept and topic to discuss, what does that actually mean when it gets down to the day to day? A little bit about Troy Hadid. He is born and still lives in Trinidad, although he's traveled all over the world. He's done so many different things in his life. You really just got to go check him out. He's amazing. But he is a motivational speaker, a yoga teacher, instructor of other yoga instructors. He has been doing this for a long time, and he has a really cool Middle Eastern Irish descent ancestry mix, and he just has an amazing heart. He grew up Catholic, Roman Catholic specifically, and so he, from the beginning, was just kind of like had this thing around people defining God for him, telling him how God was, you know, or acts or behaves or when God loves you and when God doesn't, you know, when you're in right standing, quote unquote, with God and when you're not, and he had like this this innate aversion to that from the beginning. And so that kind of really led him through a journey of redefining his relationship with God. And he tells an amazing story of when he lived in a tree, like a tree house um, that was completely exposed, no windows, no walls, just literally like you're open to nature. And that's when he kind of just realized like God is not definable. Like there isn't a box, a container of God, you know, that is God is only this way and this is the truth and it doesn't change. He was like, that doesn't work. Like he just realized the openness and the expansiveness of the divine and that led him through a whole nother season of life and so we talk about that we talk about suffering pain how do you see god in that um and one of my favorite quotes that he has on his instagram is which inspired this conversation is that god does not belong to any religion religions belong to god do not allow historical conditioning and generational misrepresentation to rob you of a relationship with divinity reclaim it and i loved that quote and that is the foundation of this conversation i really hope that it ends up inspiring you encouraging you uplifting you in a way that you feel just so empowered to connect and to have a place which we end up talking about later a place within you that realizes that it's not ego to think that you are divine that you are sovereign You are worthy of that divinity that you already have. You are it. Whether you acknowledge it, recognize it, 
step into it, actualize it, live as though it's true. It doesn't matter. That divinity spirit still lives inside of you. It still is you at, at the end of the day, right? Because this is temporary. Our human body, this human experience is temporary. It fades away, right? When we die, this hair goes, right? So <laughs> it's like no more, no more golden locks, you know, no more blue eyes. It doesn't matter what we look like. It, it all fades, right? That is not what remains. Spirit is what remains. Our divinity, our sovereignty is what remains, our soul. And so I think this is an amazing conversation. I was so excited to have it. And he just has the most amazing heart. He has a book that he's going to be releasing this year. Um, I'm going to be having him back later uh, to promote that book because, gosh, this guy, this man just has an amazing heart. And I'm so honored and privileged to share that heart with you guys today. So enjoy the episode. Be uplifted. Be encouraged. And be open-minded in this conversation. I just want to encourage you to be open-minded as we talk about redefining God and what that is for you. And anything that doesn't align, that's okay. If, if it doesn't sit right, that's fine. If it does, grab onto it. Run with it. That's what these conversations are all about anyway. So love you guys. Thank you so much, Troy, for being on the Soulish Podcast. This is amazing to have you on and to be able to share your journey, share your work uh, with the Soulish community and to dive in to God and the belief systems that we've grown up in, the ideas, the conditioning, the programming, and just kind of dive into redefining our relationship with God. It's going to be really an amazing episode. I'm so excited to get started, but thank you so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure, Whitney. Thank you for um, having me. It really is an honor to show up and share with you guys. Yeah, and you're all the way from Trinidad, yeah? Yeah, so I'm in Trinidad. I was born in Trinidad. I pretty much lived my whole life in Trinidad. I went to university in Florida and Tampa. Hey. Um, <laughs> I've traveled quite a bit. Yes. But um, yeah, I've, Trinidad has always been home. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah, I um I joke because I'm I live in Littleton, which is just a little tiny town, Littleton <laughs> from Denver. But I was conceived in Colorado Springs, and it's my little joke that I slide in at random that I was conceived in the Garden of the Gods because <laughs> there's this like beautiful garden and all of that, and everyone has a little giggle. I'm like, no, it was actually just a little apartment in Colorado Springs, yeah. but. <laughs> But yeah. I like to say Garden of the Gods. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I like it too. I yeah. <laughs> stick with that. Stick yeah, with it that. sounds very divine. <laughs> yeah. Like it was meant to be. <laughs> but I um I want to dive in because you have such an amazing journey and you are you are really just like a facilitator of the divine is how I see the work that you do. And I know that's like really lofty and you probably actually hate that I just said that because of your heart. <laughs> your heart yeah. is so pure. But I, I really do feel like you the work you do is to is to facilitate, is to give people an opportunity to meet with themselves and to meet with God, the divine spirit. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's really your heartbeat is to help people connect with the, the divine and God and to yeah. unravel and decondition and deprogram. And that's just all over your Instagram. It's all in the work that you do. Everything that I've looked at is just, that's like the heartbeat. That's the pulse that you have with the work that you do. And that's why it's such an honor to have you on the podcast, because I, I feel like that's, that's my life too. That's, that's why the Soulish podcast even exists is that, so yeah. that we can talk about that and talk about the soul journey and the evolution that we go through. And, yeah. um, one of your quotes that I just absolutely love, it was actually last June. You said, God does not belong to any religion. Religions belong to God. And you followed it up with do not allow historical conditioning and generational misrepresentation to rob you of a relationship with divinity. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> we have yeah. to talk about this. <laughs> yeah. I just love it because it's so true. You grew up Roman Catholic. I grew up Christian. I have chatted with people that are from all backgrounds, even non-religious, you know, they grew up yeah. more agnostic atheist, but we all have a 
some sort of conditioning, programming, maybe even misrepresentation, like you said, of what we think God is Mm -hmm. or divinity is. And even um, in Christianity, for me, it was that separation. Like I still am sort of separated from God. If it's sin that separates me, it's also just the fact that I need to be close with Jesus in order to connect with God. Like Jesus paved the way for me. Jesus tore the veil for Roman Catholic. It's a little different. It's more of like the priest is the mediator between you and God and, and, you know, cleanses you of all your sins or forgives you of all your sins on behalf of the divine. And so it's just different. Right. And now we both kind of live more free lives as, as far as like, we know that we have a direct connection and not everybody believes that. I think we can, we can act like we do, but maybe maybe there's something there that it still feels like there's a barrier, if yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, you know what's funny, Whitney, is that now I don't know your audience too well, your community too well, but I know that there are a lot of people in the world who would, if they had tuned into this podcast and heard it with God, click, yeah. and they're gone. Yeah. And this is what needs to change. And I've always said from a really young age, I never allowed anyone to tell me who God was, Mm -hmm. what God looked like, or what God wanted. And I think for generations, people have allowed themselves to be told what God is, what God looks like, that God even has a gender and what God wanted. And what that does is it robs someone of a direct relationship to God. Mm -hmm. And it robs them of the ability to know God. Because to be told of God is very different from knowing God. You can only know something through experience of it. Yes. But if you're always allowing someone externally to dictate and narrate your experience of something, you'll never really know it. Mm -hmm. And I think from a really young age, I questioned and I challenged um, these these exclusive ideas of God. Mm -hmm. Because God to me was inclusive. Yeah. There was nothing that was not part of it, right? There was nothing Mm -hmm. that was not included. And when we, when we draw labels and boxes around what God is or who God loves, then we create separation and yes. we create otherness. Yeah. And um, I think it's really important. I, I use the word all the time. We, we not only need to redefine our own relationship to God, but we need to allow everyone else to also redefine theirs. Yes, because I have spoken with me on several occasions with people who would identify as being an atheist mm-hmm. and they would have this resistance to with God. And I understand that the first thing is we have to take accountability and understand, because if you look at historically the wrongs and misalignment that has been brought in the name of God. Yeah. I completely understand yeah. why someone would want nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. I get it. And the first thing I think for any individual, whether they're part of organized religion or not, if someone intends to create a space in which everyone else can nurture their relationship to God or to divinity, then we have to own that. We, and it's really important that we own that because if we don't own it, then we can't realign it. We can't bring it back to what it should have been in the first place. Yeah. We don't acknowledge the yeah. fact that people, ha- everyone has a reason why they either believe God exists or doesn't exist. They have a good yeah. relationship, you know, good idea or perception, projection of God or don't. It's like yeah. everyone has a reason why. Yeah. And I think what you just said too brought up to like in Christianity, it was always like, I need to go out and sit on the street corner and save people. I need to convince people that my perception, my belief or, you know, whatever I know God to be on them. Like they need to believe the same thing that I believe or else they're wrong. 
they're yeah. going to hell. They they're going to burn, you know? And that's yeah. like that that never felt fully right. Like I I think I aligned more with like I just want people to know God, you know? Yeah. Not so much that like what I believe is the only truth, you know? Um but more of like I just want to connect you with what I experience in church because that is like that presence of God. I can't define it, you know, mm -hmm. but you definitely feel it. You experience it. It's, yeah. it's a no, no doubts. God is in the room kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And I and, wanted people to experience that. And someone else might experience that in nature mm -hmm. or on the yoga mat. Right. Right. The, the reality is for me that God is everywhere. Yeah. Not like he, he, you know, a, a really beautiful, um, story I like to share is I lived in a tree. I currently live in the forest of Trinidad's North Coast, like in the jungle -ish. And for the first <laughs> six years, I lived in a tree house. But I make it very clear to people that I'm not in Trinidad, what you call a bushman. Like I'm a city boy. I grew up in the city, right? <laughs> um, so my first night I spent in that tree house, what has it had its challenges because the treehouse had no doors or windows it was wide open i was in the middle of the forest sunset nocturnal animals came out nocturnal noises came out it was dark i was alone if i screamed there was no one to hear me <laughs> it had its challenges right yeah but then something there's something that happened um with me where that I just relaxed for a moment and I took a breath mm. and um, I began to realize that the only reason I was feeling threatened was because I saw myself as separate from everything around me. Yes. And if yeah. I was separate, guess what? I was a threat. I actually became a threat when I saw myself as separate from everything else around me because it meant that I was being driven by fear and I would do everything I could to preserve me and my identity. But as soon as I took a breath and realized that, wow, I'm not separate from it. I don't need to be threatened by it. I am a part of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I see all the time that, that living and being immersed in nature constantly there's no doubt in my mind that divinity is everywhere mm -hmm. it is in everything and it is everywhere and i think one we are, you know like christ said it as well now i don't as you know don't connect too much to the restrictions of organized religion but mm -hmm. to me jesus christ was the greatest yogi that ever walked the planet yeah and I think in a lot of ways, his teachings are misunderstood absolutely, and misrepresented. Absolutely. But one of his greatest teachings that we don't speak enough of, Whitney, if you listen to his words, he says, the kingdom of God is within you. Mm -hmm. He goes on to say, you will do far greater things than I have ever done. Mm -hmm. so you know we can't choose to believe what part of scripture is right and what part is wrong and what part we listen to and what part we don't mm -hmm. there it's all in interpretation right but for me these are the two fundamental essential teachings of christ because if the kingdom of god is within me that means it's within everyone else as well Right. And if I can live my life and every relationship and every conversation, even moments of conflict, mm -hmm. as if I were in relationship with God, as if I was speaking to God or having a disagreement with God, mm -hmm. if we could recognize that, we would live our lives very differently. We would. Yep. Yeah. I love that basically it later defines the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of heaven. And this was a conversation I've had with several people that always felt like, you know, is, am I going to go to hell because I'm gay 
You know, am I going to go to hell because um, I lied or stole or I murdered or whatever, right? Whatever it is that they say um, they put in between that. And the kingdom of God is different than the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God is love, joy, peace, and righteousness. So that means that when the kingdom of God is within you, that means it already is within you, right? So you already have the capacity to have peace that passes your understanding, joy that is not determined on circumstance, you know, love that is ever ending, never ending and, um, and goes beyond you, right? Love that connects you. And then righteousness, meaning right standing. You are always in right standing. You're never not in right standing. You're always just re- realizing exactly how right you are in your relationship yeah. with God. You know, that's kind of the the realization that there is literally nothing that can separate you from God, right? Yeah. From the love of yeah. God from God, period. Yeah. End quote, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and to me too, with you, you know, I just want to put this there because I think it's important to note that when we are in right standing in our relationship to God, doesn't necessarily make may mean that somebody else is in wrong standing. Exactly. So it's about just recognizing that this is what feels right to me, that divinity speaks and connects to every individual you know and uh, mm-hmm. i i'm really careful when i when i speak of what i'm about to say so i want to invite listeners to take it loosely and if it doesn't sit for you put it aside it might come back it might connect to you at some point or maybe not maybe you disregard it completely but for me I'll say two things, you know, when, when we are initially told that we are made in the image and likeness of gods and go- of God, of gods and goddesses, I sometimes wonder if we got it wrong in a sense that rather than taking godly characteristics and trying to meet them in human form, we took egotistical human characteristics and we put them on God. So what we created was an egotistical God, a judgmental God, a God that governed by fear. Mm-hmm. The God I have come to know doesn't want to be feared. He wants to be loved. Right. He doesn't want us to act in a certain way out of fear of judgment. He wants us to live in a certain way because we love him. We see him. Or who, and we acknowledge that divinity in all things. So I don't believe God would ever govern by fear because that would mean that God had an ego. And I don't believe that's it. And how I I interpret, I've come to interpret the teachings of Christ that I think it's often missed is that, you know, growing up in, in Catholic environs, we're always told about sin and what sin is. We're born into sin and we're born sinners and we're always going to be sinners. That's not a narrative I relate to. No, me neither. Because I think, I think that narrative is a cop-out. Mm-hmm. That narrative gives us an excuse to keep doing the things we're doing that are out of alignment. It's disempowering. Yeah, exactly. Where and, and to acknowledge what I'm about to say is huge, which is why there's so much resistance to it. I believe that what Christ was teaching, Christ came here to tell us, wake up. You are capable of so much more. God lives within you. Mm-hmm. And his words, you will do far greater things than I have ever done. That's not words you speak to somebody who's born into sin. Right. That's words you speak to somebody who you know is capable of embodying the love and understanding of God. Mm -hmm. Who has the kingdom of God within them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, to acknowledge that, Whitney, comes with a responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes if you look at it, it's like, yeah, it might seem heavy at, at first, but then it's like, wow, 
we we are capable of changing the world. We are capable of loving to levels that are not even conceivable by human mind. Like this is what we're capable of, you know? Yeah. And um, it's so much easier just to say, oh, I'm born a sinner. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I can't. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. I can't it. connect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm in. I'm unable to. I I think too. Um, just the idea that, you know, everyone experiences God in their unique way because we are all individual expressions of God. Like we are all so unique. There isn't one person that's alike. You know. Yeah. Like just that idea that we are all unique. And therefore we all uniquely connect and therefore we all are unique expressions of God. So like when you were saying talking with someone, like we are talking to each other right now, I understand yeah. that I'm talking to God in a different expression right now. I'm yeah. getting God in a different expression. I'm experiencing God in a different way just in this conversation. And that changes the game. It changes yeah. the way that we perceive each other. It kind of, automatically ends any projections that I have, you know, of you yeah. being Middle Eastern, Irish, Roman Catholic boy, <laughs> you know, like yeah. yoga, yogi, <laughs> yeah. tree hugging yeah. and living in it, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like all of a sudden my projections stop because I just realize, oh, I'm, I'm just experiencing a, a unique expression of God right now. And that is, yeah. that is my interaction. That is my connection. And then that is just, it enriches your life. It enriches in the way that you then connect with God on your own, not even yeah. with someone else. Right. It just, it changes everything because you realize, like you said, everything is God is divine. It's all part of the divine. And it's all an expression of the divine and is meant to bring us into more right standing with God where, and not it because we're in wrong standing, but because we are always, we are always growing in our understanding. We're always deconditioning. We're always, yeah. um, everything is being, you know, unveiled. It's like a new present every day. You know, everything that you experience is like opening a new present and realizing, oh my God, this exists here too. Oh. Like, I didn't even know that. Like, now I get to experience this is amazing, you know? Yeah. So that's how I kind of see it. And that's yeah. been amazing. Game yeah. changer. And you know what I think we should mention to Whitney is I, I, I put myself in the shoes of someone listening to this who maybe has experienced abuse or oppression. Yes. Or, you know, they are very, I call them now, what appear, things that appear as darkness. Yeah. There's a lot in our world that appears as darkness. Yes. And I could see somebody um, looking at the world and saying, well, how could God possibly live there? Yeah. And I think it's important as well to, um, for us to remember that if we are not our bodies, because to me, this is one of the biggest narratives we're told when we're born, mm -hmm. right? I am Troy, this is my body. Mm -hmm. That's not true. That's not, I don't buy into that because I know that I am going to exist beyond my body. When my body ceases to exist, I will also exist. Whether it be my consciousness or the resonance or vibration of my right. life. There's right. no, this body is not who we are, right? Right. It's temporary. So, yeah. So, so is the suffering and the pain of the physical body. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing we need to acknowledge. I'm not saying it doesn't feel real. I'm not saying it's not painful and causes us suffering. Yeah. Of course it does, right? This is human yeah. experience. Yep. But what I, what I think it's important for us to understand is that we are spiritual beings. We are seeds of God in human form that have come here in this experience to grow and transform in some way. And we, each one of us have a very different curriculum that we have to navigate. Yes. All of us. Tailored to us specifically. Specifically. And what I invite people to, the perspective I invite people to take is when we experience suffering, when we experience pain, when we experience wrongdoing, those, that's part of our curriculum. Those have come to us so that we can learn forgiveness, yeah. compassion, empathy, 
So maybe we can remember that we are not our bodies, that we are part of something so much bigger. And I just think it's important for us to talk about this because you know, so often we use it with love and God and it all sounds like flowers and rainbows and butterflies yeah. and bunnies. <laughs> and it's, it's important to recognize that yeah. God lives everywhere. He's in everything. And if you, if you sit in darkness long enough, mm -hmm. you will see the light because light actually was born out of darkness. Mm -hmm. everything came out of this womb of darkness so i i always say that i don't believe there's any such thing as absolute darkness there's always that spark there's always mm -hmm. that spark somewhere in it you know mm -hmm. that's actually exactly the quote that i was just gonna pull out because it's just amazing that there is always light in the darkness sometimes we just sit in the we just don't sit in the dark long enough to see it or maybe it came in a different color or shade than we hoped i love that quote from your instagram because yeah. it's true i think there is a lot of suffering happening there's a lot of suffering in the world there's a lot of pain i in my small little 35 years of life have experienced suffering to a degree you know i obviously it's hard to compare with other suffering in the world i mean that's so yeah. like big but i know it just from my own experience of what pain feels like of what that literal heartache you feel like a pole just went between your you know your ribs um in the middle of your chest and you're just you're aching you're in so much pain emotional yeah. pain mental pain physical pain i've watched my father suffer for almost basically 30 years in back pain he broke his back when i was like four and he's just suffered and suffered so much and i grew up in a household of suffering of someone that is literally breaking their teeth in their mouth when they're sleeping because they're grinding their teeth at night because they're in so much pain even when they're sleeping, wow. can only sleep for 15 minutes at a time, 20 minutes at a time, because that's all the pain will allow. The pain ends up waking him up, right? Like I've yeah. seen suffering, I've seen physical suffering, emotional suffering, mental suffering, same as you probably have in your life. Yeah. You've you've witnessed it, you've experienced it. We all have to whatever level. And, and so I think it is great. And thank you so much for bringing that up because it can seem very woo woo and flowery yeah. and but when it comes down to it what what i have seen happen in suffering is that we end up realizing again that we are not victims that we are not actually disempowered there's something that happens in that moment of pain and suffering where you have to make a decision on what exactly do you really truly believe and, yeah. and I think that there is, like you said, there's no wrong standing. If you choose to decide that you are a victim and that you are disempowered and that you, you literally have no engagement with anything that is happening to you, everything is happening to you and you have, you've done nothing, you know, you're not willing to acknowledge anything that has to do with you having responsibility or a part to play in, then that is your journey. And I, I've learned yeah. to honor the journey when someone chooses to stay in a victim mentality or disempowered mentality, or they're still wrapped up in shame or guilt, you know, yeah. even for something that they've done. It's like, but that may be their journey. And I came from a place of saying, rescue, save them from that, you know, uh, cause them to no longer suffer in that shame or that guilt or that pain, that emotional burden of thinking that they're not enough or they're not worthy or they're not lovable, you know, but yeah. the truth is, is that we all, like you said, we all choose our experiences and they're specified exactly to what we need. And some people need to experience suffering at a level. I've just kind of realized that in my life of I've always yeah. been praying and begging God to save my dad, you know, from pain, from physical pain, which of course, like, of course I want that, you know, I love him. I don't want him to yeah. suffer. But there's something in my mind that has also led me to realize maybe this is something he chose and I can still wish him well and I can still pray that, you know, that he has relief, but I can see how he's choosing that in his life of the disempowered state or the victim. And I can see how he has in times and moments flipped to I'm empowered. I can do this. I can find yeah. freedom. I can, God can heal me and I can also be participate in my healing right so it's yeah. like we all kind of struggle and 
I think where the light and the darkness is, is us realizing our actual divinity. Like when we're experiencing suffering and pain, it's realizing that that little spark is the fact that we are spirit first, right? We are not physical first. We're, we're soul, we're spirit. That's the one thing that connects us to literally everything. And that is the little spark in the darkness of whatever this is, you know, this experience here on earth. And that's how we can find the freedom, the strength, the love, the compassion, the empathy, the forgiveness, whatever that is, because we can realize that this is temporary. What we're experiencing is temporary. No, no matter how great the level of suffering, pain, you know, yeah. unforgiveness you're holding to yourself, shame, whatever it is, yeah. you still are going to look back on this life and say, cool, I experienced that, you know, like, yeah, now I know what that's like. Yeah, it's, um, it's so important to, you know, I hear you, I'm speaking with me and it, it's all really conditioning, right? The, the perspective someone takes on any situation or any experience of life and who anyone is at any point in their life is a product of their conditioning. Yeah. And if someone has never known, you know, I was talking about this yesterday, there's some of the biggest privileges in our world that we don't speak of. You know, when we say a privilege, we talk about skin color, gender, maybe wealth, all that kind of stuff. The biggest privilege in our world is knowing what love is. It's knowing what it feels like to be loved. It's knowing safety, right? It's knowing security. And there's so many people in our world that don't know that. They have lived their entire lives feeling threatened, feeling attacked. So that's all they know. That's all they know. And... I could talk about it for a long time, but I'll just end with this. There's a, there's a quote I have tattooed on my arm. You probably can't see it from there. But um, it's a constant reminder for me. And it says, I have not come to teach. I have come to love. And love will teach. And, mm. you know, sometimes we want to look at someone and we just want to shake them up and tell them, get it. Yeah. Why can't you get it? And... Um, Sometimes their conditioning, our conditioning is what is preventing us from recognizing certain things or understanding certain things or showing up differently. And one of the most powerful things we can do for one another is just love and support one another. Yeah. Have people right. feel safe and that love, that will do you teaching. Sometimes it even teaches us more than we think. Mm-hmm. We think we're, we're going to teach someone else and we, we're just going to love them and that love teaches us a thing or two. But it's so important to recognize that, you know, adding on what we, what we just mentioned, that we are not our physical bodies. We are seeds of God with each one of us has different conditioning. And that conditioning is what we interact with on a daily basis. Yes. If we can see beyond the conditioning, and see one another as the seeds of God, then forgiveness is not an option. It's inevitable. Mm-hmm. It's inevitable. It's not an option we have, you know? You end up just, it just kind of happens because what is, yeah. what is forgiveness? Can you yeah. define forgiveness? Well, how I define forgiveness is, forgiveness is believing that someone can be better and do better, even when they don't know they need to be or they can't see how. Mm, so in other words, for me, forgiveness is, yeah. is seeing God within someone, even when they can't see God within themselves. Yeah, yeah. It's about giving them that possibility and holding a space in which they can be a better human being in any moment. Yeah. To me, that is forgiveness. It's not dependent on an apology. Right. It's not dependent on an acknowledgement. Yep. It's not dependent on anything. It's just about acknowledging that we are our conditioning, that everyone has specific conditioning. And, you know, I think this was, I can't remember who said this quote. I forgot her name, our author. But if somebody knew better, they would do better. 
Mm-hmm. It's easy for you to point that finger at someone and say, you know better. But you mm-hmm. never walked in that person's shoes. Right. You don't know. Yeah. For me, having someone to teach me right and wrong, having someone to show me what love is, show me what forgiveness is, that's a privilege. I can't assume everyone had that. So it would be it would be out of alignment for me to point my finger at someone and say, you know better. Mm. I, I don't know that. I can't know that they know better, but I can create a space in which they can realize that they can do better. Right. Yep. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Now the work that you do, you've, you've had like quite the journey throughout your life of like all these different things that you've done, but what are you focusing on now? Like, what is the essence of the work that you do? Because I know you're a yoga teacher, facilitator, yeah. really, of just yeah. the divine is what I like to call you. You can take yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you, you, hit it, you hit it spot on, Whitney, spot on. I now do a lot of, quite a bit of public speaking, um, especially in corporate environments. I've been teaching yoga for over 15 years. Wow. And the reason I say you hit it spot on is anytime I I come into yoga space or yoga community or teacher training, I always say, if I did not believe that the practice of yoga increased our capacity to love one another and deepen each individual's relationship to God, I will walk away from it right now. And that's how I feel about everything. You know, I just finished writing my first book, which is looking for representation. And it's now with an amazing editor. And um, even that, no matter what I do, whether it be speaking or writing or teaching yoga or everyday relationships, I just hope that I can reconnect somebody to their understanding of spirit or God in some way that I can help them remember what what love looks like. You know, I'm sure you may have heard of an author called Neil Donald Walsh, Conversations Mm -hmm. with God. Good. So so I listened to a podcast recently where he said something really bold. It's a really bold practice. And I've been trying to do it constantly since I heard it. And he says that every time you see an individual, be it someone you've never seen before, somebody you see for the first time on any given day, you say to yourself, your life just got better because of my having walked into it. Mm. And it may sound cocky, it may sound overconfident, but Mm -hmm. it's all about understanding our power and our intention. Why not? Why would you not want to make someone's life better? That, That is the intention we should bring into every moment. Mm -hmm. So why is it, why does it seem so wrong for us to declare that? To stand in that and declare it to ourselves. I mean, like he rightfully said, you wouldn't go and tell somebody aloud because then they might think you're crazy, (laughs) but you can say it to yourself. Mm -hmm. And that is the intention you set for your interaction. So that is what I hope of anything I do, Whitney no matter how it shows up or what shoes I step into. But as of right now, I am public speaking. I am teaching and sharing yoga and I am writing books, which hopefully will be published this year, 2023, 2024. So good. Yeah. So good. One of my favorite things too, that I've, I've picked up from, I think it was a pastor, Bill Johnson, I think said this, but maybe you took it from someone else too, but it's, it's also kind of based in scripture of like, redeem the days, redeem the time, um, for they are evil is I think, I think it's an old Testament scripture that God basically says to somebody like maybe a prophet or whatever in his, like, you know, sending him off in his purpose of being a prophet of God. But I've always used that as wherever I go, I want to be a carrier of the presence of God, you know, a facilitator carrier. I, I do. I want, when I walk into the room, it's not an ego thing. It's not a look at me thing, but I want people to feel the shift when I walk into a space. I really do. And why is that? Because I want to redeem spaces. I want to redeem 
the time. I want to redeem, you know, just the energy I want. I want to be a cleanser of energy, even just me walking into a room because I want people to find that freedom in connection with God. I want them to feel the presence of God. I want to, I want to walk in that, you know, yeah. because I so badly want to see the world healed, you know, in that, in that aspect. And that is a projection, I guess, um, that I have that the world is unhealed in some way, but yeah. wherever there is suffering, I just do have a lot of compassion for that. And if, yeah. if I can bring love to that, you know, not correction, not you're wrong for suffering or believing that way or thinking that or experiencing that. It's just if I can love someone in the midst of that, show the love of God, that they can connect with the love of God um, and understand that they are worthy of that connection. They're worthy of receiving um, as well as giving it. We're all worthy of giving and receiving love. That's been a mantra that I'm going to have for this entire year is I'm open to give yeah. and receive love. Why? Because I want to receive it and I want to give it. And mm -hmm. so I love that that is in essence, the work that you do wherever, yeah. if it's corporate or if it's a yoga studio, um, it doesn't yeah. really matter if it's in your book, you are really wanting to also connect people with that worthiness to connect and that ability to connect that we're hardwired for that connection, not uh, not disconnection. And I think that's yeah. really amazing. Beautiful. So, thank you. Yeah, I love it. Thank you so much. Where can um where can people find you and so uh, that they can connect with you? The best places to find me would be my website, troyhuddy.com, and then Instagram. Awesome. And cool. if anybody has any questions with me, I am open. They can reach out to me. I will gladly I work with people one on one. Um, sometimes in the US and the UK as well. So if I can assist anyone or if I can help them on their journey in any way um, I am there and, and if they will connect with anything I bring they could follow me on Instagram click share because the more followers the better chance of a book deal yes yeah. the better chance of you guys reading my book yes which is what yeah. we want for sure yeah absolutely. thank you so much for your time thank you so much for this conversation it was beautiful beautiful yeah. conversation with you Thank you for having me with me and I love you and your listeners as well. Yes. Love you back. Love. <laughs>